right, we have lesson 116, which is the area of parallelograms and the area of trapezoids. So let's just review what area is. Area is the space that something takes up, or the space that something covers. It's a two-dimensional thing. Uh, it's planar, meaning it's flat, geometric shapes. Um, and let's review. If we are going to find the area of a rectangular shape, we know our formula is A equals L times W. Area equals length times width. If we're talking about a triangle, we know that area equals one half base times height, height being found at a 90 degree angle. And then the area of a circle, we get A equals pi r squared. But what do we do when we have shapes like parallelograms and trapezoids? So that's what we're going to look at today. Now the book takes you through uh, if you read through the instruction part of it, the book takes you through a couple exercises that they're trying to help you um, see and understand some, some truths about parallelograms. So we're going to go through that, and then I'm, I have like a, we would have cut things together in class if we could have met, met together. But we're going to look at this parallelogram. Now assuming this is drawn perfectly, both of those sides are parallel. Our top length is six, and our uh, diagonal length there is, oh, is four. And then it shows us that this is three. Now remember, diagonal lengths and heights that are 90 degree angles are not the same. So what they tell us to do first is to cut this into two triangles. Okay, and so we get two triangles and we're going to find the area of each triangle and then add them together. So to find the area of a triangle, we know it's one half base times height. Our base is six. <laughs> our base is six and our height is three. Remember height is found at a 90 degree angle there, okay? So, one half, three times six is 18, equals nine, and this is in inches. Okay, so that's, for this is one, and this is two, we get 18, oops, sorry, nine inches squared. Then, let's do the second one. This is number one. Number two. A equals one half B times H. A equals one half. Our base is six. Our height is three. Are you seeing what's going to happen here? All right, so our area is going to equal nine inches squared. Nine inches squared. So here's the thing with parallelograms. Because parallelograms have two parallel sides and they're regular, meaning that they're the same length, I want to show you something. What we would have done is had a piece of paper, and I would have already had this copied for you. This is a parallelogram, right? So two parallel lines, two sets of parallel lines. Then we would have cut it out, all right? Then we would have folded it so that the top and bottom match up, which means we're folding it at a 90 degree angle, and then we would have cut it. And what you would have seen is that for a parallelogram, when we cut it and rearrange it, does it make a, a, the shape of a polygon, of a quadrilateral? Yes. So the area, the physical area that it takes up is the same as a rectangle, which is just length times width, right? And we see that and length times width is another way of saying base times height. I know it's a little different. But we see that by cutting it into two triangles and finding the area, we're doing half. But if each half is exactly the same, they add up to a whole. So for regular polygons, you can just do base times height. Okay? Is 6 times 3 18? We have on 9 for one triangle, 9 for the other, but 6 times 3 is 18. 
Remember though, that's only for a regular polygon. So let's do, all right, so the sum, the, the main point of this part of the lesson is that the area of a polygon is the same as base times height. Okay, and the reason they call it height instead of length and width, base and height, is because, because this is angular, the height is different than the width or the length, okay? So just remember that height has to be taken at a 90 degree angle, and so that's why we say height instead of length and width. So now we're gonna look at trapezoids. Trapezoid always reminds me the word of Scooby-Doo, like zoinks, trapezoinks. Um, but it's really trapezoid, and your teacher's just kind of a weirdo. So, anyways, let's look at some examples for trapezoids. So we're going to find the area of this trapezoid, and the uh, dimensions are in feet. It's a really wonky kind of shape. Um, and then they give us the height. Notice they always put the little 90-degree marker in there so that you know it's the height. We have four, this is seven, nine, and six. Okay, so to solve for trapezoids, we have to cut it into two triangles, okay? So we're gonna look at this and we're gonna say, okay, I'm gonna cut it into these two, two triangles. And so I'm gonna find the area of triangle one and I'm gonna find the area of triangle two and I know the area of triangle one plus the area of triangle two is gonna give me the total area. So for number one, area equals one half base times height. Area equals one half, my base is six. My height is four. One half of 24 gives me an area of 12 feet squared. All right, that's for the first one. Now for my second one, area equals one half base times height. Area equals one half nine times four. Area equals one half nine times four is 36. Half of 36 is 18 feet squared. I have 12 and 18. 12 feet squared plus 18 squared equals 30 feet squared. Polygons, regular polygons, regular parallelograms, <laughs> you can just find base times height. Trapezoids are irregular quadrilateral polygons, and so those you have to cut into two triangles. One half base times height is a form formula that we are very familiar with. Find the area of each triangle, add them together. In your book, they give you this big, long equation, and it is a true equation. I just think it's rather confusing. So they say one half base one plus height plus one half base two plus height, but that is the same thing as one half the height times base one plus base two. Now, you can do that if you want to. I've just always been way more comfortable finding the area of the first triangle, finding the area of the second triangle, and adding them together. So it's up to you if you want to use this formula or not. Let me know if you have any questions.